Okay, I'm Brad Neal, University of Indianapolis. So let's continue our discussion about gases. Okay, we've got another relationship to look at. This time we're gonna hold temperature constant and we're gonna hold the number of particles constant. So that means we're looking at the relationship between pressure and volume. So we're going to change our volume and then we're going to determine what pressure changes are occurring. So to change our volume, we're gonna grab the little handle over here. So right now, the way the container, the volume of our container gives us a pressure, uh, it's kind of fluctuating, let's say 5.8 atmospheres. Okay, let's make this container really big and see what happens to that pressure. Okay, so the, we made it as big as we could and take a look at the pressure. It's now significantly less. So as the volume gets bigger, the pressure drops. Excuse me, hopefully that makes a bit of sense because of the definition of pressure. Pressure is the collisions that are happening, right? Force divided by area. Um, and so if you're having a fewer number of collisions, then you're having fewer interactions uh, with the particles and the walls of said container. So your pressure then decreases. What happens if we make the volume really, really small? So let's make it as small as we can get. Oh man, that pressure jumps way up there. Um, so to this like 12 atmospheres. So th this seems to be a relationship where as one goes up, the other goes down. And in fact, when you take a look at your book, you see you've got this relationship of Boyle's law. If you go into the lab though, an interesting thing occurs. What you find is if you plot volume versus pressure in a uh, spreadsheet software like Excel or whatnot, um, you get, if you just plot straight volume versus pressure, you get this kind of inverted curve. This inverted curve, or it's not an inverted curve, but this slope line. Um, the slope here is important because, let's make that a little bigger. It, you might try to look at this and say like, oh, hey, look, that, you know, there's a relationship there. I can get Excel to give me the line equation for that and it's all good and it's gravy. Just because Excel can do it doesn't mean it should. Um, if you run your R square if, and if you don't have enough data, you can make it look as though that this is a relationship that does give you a line. Um, the point I'm trying to make here is when you collect data, it's really good to collect data over a wide range of areas. Um, in this particular case, we had a really small volume all the way up to a pretty big volume. Um, if you only got 15 milliliters to 30 milliliters, and if you only looked at that part of the graph, it looks fairly linear. Um, it really requires getting to kind of the ends and the extremes to start to see this curve nicely. Now, we said, based off of that viewing of the simulation, as the volume got bigger, the pressure decreased. Um, and so that is indicative of an inverse relationship. And in fact, when we plot volume versus the inverse of pressure, so one over our pressure values, we see this is what gives us a really nice straight, sane, straight line. Um, and so the relationship between pressure and volume is not proportional. It's an inverse relationship. And that's why this is written out the way it is. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume or, or you could say directly proportional to the inverse of volume one over V. Um, pressure volume relationship, this Boyle's law, this is a, it's not a bucking of the trend compared to the other laws. This is just the relationship that these gases have. Um, and hopefully looking at this simulation makes it a little bit easier to understand where that's coming from. Um, yeah.